I shallow one want to begin this lesson by giving all praise, honey, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, Waha Raka Kodash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. I also would like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Much do honors and respect to the sense that brethren out there that is also laboring in his work. And as always, I want to say Shalom to the believers, you know, the Akim as well as the Aqua, which will be you brothers along with the sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So, yeah, I just wanted to go into another quick lesson, you know, highlighting the different stumbling blocks and pretty much the main obstacle, if you will, that keep our people from coming into this truth is the riches of this world. You know, when you preoccupied with becoming rich, you know, and gaining the goods of this world, which comes in the form of money, then this becomes a hindrance to you fully committing, you know, to your how about me, how shot, you know, and embracing this truth when it's presented to you, which you will be surprised to know that those amongst our people who are considered well off, you know, whether it's in the form of these different entertainers, these rappers and R&B singers, these actors in Hollywood, these athletes, you know, in the NBA and the NFL. Well, guess what? The majority of those amongst our people, they are privy to this truth. They are familiar with the whole Hebrew Israelite thing. And in a lot of cases, they actually believe <laughs> that this is the truth, man. But what's the main catalyst that keeps them from fully committing? You guessed it, the riches of this world. This money, man. You see? Because there's cases of... Uh, you know, like this guy Kendrick Lamar, he know that he's an Israelite, you know. Uh, this guy um, Kodak Black, he came out and proclaimed that he was an Israelite. You see, Nick Cannon, he know about this Israelite thing. But is these guys going to join a camp, you know, throw on a garment and go out there and proclaim Yahweh Bashem and Shah? No. Why? Because they have uh, chose the riches of this world over our Lord, see. So the riches of this world is a snare, man. And that's why for the believers who have come into this arena, you have to constantly thank you, how about you, how about Because again, he built you a certain way. And our walk that he has prepared for us, you know, is a testament of that. Meaning the Lord kept us from the riches of this world. Which, you know, being in his flesh, we desire to have enough money you know, to cover uh, our bills and, you know, to relax. Hey, we, we got a ruling class mentality, man. We're a royal people. So, you know, we want to uh, be able to do what we want. We want to be able to kick back and relax, man, and enjoy, you see. But that's not convenient for you when you come into this truth, you see. Matter of fact, let's start off with that. In the book of our Proverbs, the 30th chapter, starting at the 8th verse, it says, remove far from me. Vanity and lies give me neither poverty nor riches. See? Feed me with food convenient for me. Least I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Yes, so to become full translates to the riches of this world. If we had the riches of this world, we would deny Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. You know? Case in point, if you had enough bread, 10 million in the bank, you don't have to pray to your how about me, how shy, you know, to um, strengthen you or um, increase you that you might pay your water bill, man, because that's going to be covered. You see? So the Lord put us in certain situations, so by default, we'll call on him. That's why the scriptures say the just shall live by faith, because pretty much it's a day-to-day -day walk with us, man, week to week, check to check with us. But again, if you had $10 million, this would take your how about me, how shot out of the equation, man. You see? You would have no need to uh, trust on your how about me, how shot and lean on your how about me, how shot. Why? Because you will lean on your bread. See? And that's what the scripture is saying. It says, give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Yeah, our daily raiment, you know, shelter, roof over our head. We able to eat and drink, you know, the things sufficient for the day. And that's all we can ask for, see? It says, feed me 
with food convenient for me, least I be poor and deny thee and say who is the Lord. See? Or least I be poor and steal and take the name of my power in vain. Yeah, and on the flip side, you know, the Lord having given us the walk of being homeless, eating out of damn garbage can, you see? Because in any event, you will steal, you know, you will do things that uh, take the name of your power in vain. You know, somebody might sit their purse down and you snatch it and take out running, <laughs> you know, and it'll be driven by desperation, man, you know, to fill your belly. So the Lord gave us a perfect balance. He placed us in between the two, riches and poverty, you know. And again, the scriptures tell you how the just will live by faith. So we live day by day. See that? But again, as it concerns our people who have the riches of this world, then guess what? They're not um, going to ever be able to fully commit to this truth. Again, you will be surprised to know that these uh, stars, if you will, amongst our people, those who are considered to be well off or perceived to be well off, you know, guess what? They know about this Israelite thing and they believe, <laughs> see? But they're not willing to fully commit to being an Israelite, you see? Why? Because they uh, trust more in their riches. And that decision is, is driven by their love for money. Matter of fact, let's grab that real quick in the book of 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter, in the 10th verse before we get into this lesson, which we all should know this precept. It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. See, the love of money is the root of all evil. This is the source of the wickedness that springs forth. Your love, you know, your lust and desire for money, man. And you hear the stories, man. You know, what uh, Jake have to do to get this money. They have to perform these lewd acts with these old wrinkled up so-called Jews, man. See? Things that's unspeakable, man, they have to do. Perform these different rituals. See? That's because they have a love for this money. See? It says, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covet it after, okay, meaning you desire it, you know, you want it, you want it in your possession, which while some covet it after, they have erred from the faith, see? You will never be able to fully uh, embrace this truth, man, or coming into this faith is going to become an obstacle, man, see? It's going to become an adventure for you to come into this truth if you have a love for money, and especially if you have access to the riches of this world. See that? It says, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And that's ultimately what happens when you get this money. You know, you can't have a, a, a decent night's sleep. You know, you're always looking over your shoulders. You don't know if, if the people in your company is really your friends or they there just for your money. In most cases, they there for your bread. You know, different women throwing themselves at you, man. You know, they got these alternative motives, arterial motives, should I say. See that? So you pierce yourself with many sorrows. And ultimately, this is going to uh, be fulfilled and made manifest when all hell break loose, man. Because our people really believe that money is everything. Now, the scriptures tell you that um, money is a defense. Yeah, that's true. But that's applying to this world that we're in now. Right now, in this current system, under the watch of Esau, money is a defense because everything is centered around money, man. You know, in the ancient world, you didn't necessarily have to have money. You could have resources. You could have uh, cattle and livestock. You could actually barter and you can trade. But here in this society, money is a defense. But money isn't everything. And Jake believed that, which um, brings me to a quote I came across you know, um, concerning money from different rappers or um, famous people amongst Israel. And this quote right here from Meek Mill, this jumped out to me because this is, you know, nothing really philosophical, but yet it captures the mentality of Jake. 
all right, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you will put a lot of stock into this statement right here. It says, people say money ain't nothing. Money is basically everything. This is the mentality of our people, man. You know, a lot of time, especially when you bring this truth out to Jake, they are willing to, um, you know, lift their head up in pride, you know, and it'll all be based around the fact that they got a dollar over their lunch money, man, you know. You ever notice, Jake, they can be in an argument and they feel that they can win the argument by saying, well, guess what? My bill's paid, you know. I got money in the bank. See, that's the mentality of our people right there. And they really believe that money is basically everything, see? But what they're going to come to find out is that money is not going to profit them in the days that's fast approaching, man, when all hell break loose. Really, that money is going to be an indictment against them, matter of fact. Let's go there. This is uh, Second Ezra, the ninth chapter. And starting at the ninth verse, it says, Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. Yeah, and that's dealing with a lot of you jakes that's well off. You know, because we don't get on these uh, celebrities amongst our people enough. But guess what? They not exempt. From the judgment of your how about me how shy man. In fact, they're gonna feel the brunt of, of the judgment of your how about me how shy. Because pretty much they sold out and they aligned themselves with Esau. And see, again, the Lord made them privy to this truth. Again, you'll be surprised to know how many of these celebrities actually know who we are. They actually watch a lot of these views you see, you know, on the different brothers' channels starting with the apostles, is a lot of celebrities, man. See? So again, it says, then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. And this applies to a lot of you celebrities. Yeah, you know that this is the truth, but you cast it away. See? You heard plenty of videos, for an example, concerning the offense of adultery. Yeah, you'll go make a song, you know, talking about popping another man's wife, man, and you actually go live it out. Well, guess what? The scriptures say that you're going to dwell in torments. See? Verse 10, for such as in their life have received benefits. See, in your lifetime, you receive benefits. You see Jake um, on Instagram, you know, and Snapchat with these uh, stacks of bread, these racks on racks, man. Well, that's a form of you receiving benefits. See? It says, for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. See? Yeah, you receive the riches of this world, but it was at the expense of knowing your how about and how shall. So what's the penalty for that? Let's read on. Verse 11. And they that have loathed my law while they yet had liberty and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them. Yeah, again, meaning these celebrities, repentance was open to you as well. Kendrick Lamar and this nigga uh, Nick Cannon, they know about the Israelite thing. So repentance was open to them as well, see? It says, understood not, but despised it. The same was know it after death by pain, see? After death by pain, which ultimately is going to come in the form of those ICBM missiles when they shot back and forth throughout the world, which is going to mark the uh, great and dreadful day of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Guess what? A lot of these celebrities, they're going to die in that day, and your money is not going to deliver you. You're not going to be able to set up a meeting with your how about some how shot, man, and throw your stacks on the table, tell the Lord to give you a pass. No, man. Matter of fact, this is Zephaniah, the first chapter. And starting at the 17th verse, it says, And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord. Yeah, and this is multifold, meaning it's different meanings to this precept. Okay, when the Lord said, and I will bring distress upon men, that they shall walk like blind men, that's physically and spiritually. Spiritually, you blind, okay? You don't know where you're going. And the scriptures tell you, if the blind lead the blind, they shall both fall in a ditch, which that ditch is America. But the physical meaning to this is when those missiles are shot, 
you're going to be blind. It's going to be dark, man. And it tells you, um, you know, when those missiles hit, because we were speaking concerning this at camp, how even before the missiles hit ground zero, you're going to feel that intense heat. And guess what? Your eyes is going to be melted out your socket, man. Matter of fact, let's prove that real quick and we'll go back. All right? Because the scriptures give you a vivid illustration of that day, man. And it's nothing nice. <laughs> See? This is Zechariah, the 14th chapter, in the 12th verse. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. And that's not dealing with just the other nations. That's dealing with the two-thirds as well. You fought against Jerusalem. Okay? You fought against the Israel of the Most High. It says, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And what other weapon can uh, accomplish this? Will your flesh consume away while you stand upon your feet? Those missiles, man, in that intense heat. See? It says, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their heads, so like it, in their holes. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. See that? That's the scriptures giving you a vivid illustration of that day. But the point is, their eyes shall consume away in their holes. See? Which when you go back to Zephaniah 1 and 17, and I will bring distress upon men, that they shall walk like blind men. Yes, yeah, so in that day when those missiles hit, you're going to be groping around, your eyes is going to be burnt out your head. That's before even the missiles hit. From that intense heat, see? Because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dawn. See? Verse 18, Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. You see that? See? So while you have this guy Meek Mill in this quote, which Jake, they share this sentiment, people say money ain't nothing. Money is basically everything. Well, guess what? Money is not going to be enough to deliver you from the wrath for your how about your house shot. And in fact, that money is going to be an indictment against you, man. See? So again, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Yeah, and that's why the scripture saying one hour this place is going to be overthrown. So, you know, although, you know, the drama has been building, you people have been racking up your tab, so to speak. Well, the Lord is going to, going to clean everything up in one hour. See? And your riches is not going to profit you in that day. See that? This is Proverbs, the 11th chapter. In the fourth verse, it says, Riches profit not in the day of wrath. See? Why is that written, man? This applies to our people mainly. And you know it also applies to uh, Esau, the super rich. See? But we know for a certainty that uh, they're not going to be delivered. The scriptures tell you that um, there's no place for repentance for Esau. So who is this really going out to, man? We're sending this one out right here to those who are perceived to be well off amongst our own people. And the fact that your riches is the main obstacle, you know, that's keeping you from coming into this truth, to return into your power, man. See? And it shows how simple our people are because they trust in these riches when really... This money here in the modern world hold no weight. Matter of fact, I'm going to go back there. But let me grab some real quick. Um, what's that? I believe it's... Um, give me one second. Proverbs, the 23rd chapter, and starting at the 4th verse, it says, Labor not to be rich, Cease from thine own wisdom. Yeah, which goes back to putting your trust in your how about me, how shot. When you labor to be rich, by default, you lean towards your own understanding. You know, you're constantly plotting and scheming, you know, how to get more riches, man. But for those who put their trust in your how about me, how shot, they cease from their own wisdom. See, again, labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Would thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? Yeah, and that's dealing with these FRNs. Okay, 
this paper money, man. That's not real money. Real uh, wealth is based upon gold and silver, you know, different resources. You know, uh, the minerals of the earth, whether it's in the form of gold or different livestock. See? Again, would thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Yeah, and that's heavy because when you look at these FRNs, it actually have an eagle on it. See? But they literally fly away. And that's all too common amongst our people, man. You know, they make it in this society, but they either die broke or no, or they're hit by the IRS. They lose it all. You know, case in point, this guy, uh, Red Fox, who played the character Fred Simpf, he died broke, man, with the IRS taking everything that he possessed, man. See? Or you consider, uh, you know, this guy Prince. You know, he made all this bread, but when he died, the family was left fighting over, uh, you know, the real estate, the money. And usually what happens is it's split up amongst the family. But then the next generation, they might see a portion of that. And the next generation sees nothing. That's a form of riches making themselves wings. See? Again, would thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? See? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. So our people scratch and claw to get this money, all to see it go away. See that? And certainly these riches is not going to benefit you when all hell break loose. Which brings me back here to Proverbs 11, chapter and the fourth verse. Riches profit not in the day of wrath. See? But righteousness delivereth from death. So that's why pretty much we got what it takes to uh, pay off your how about your shot, so to speak. We have the riches which comes in the form of this knowledge. You know, this, the riches of this world is not going to deliver you when all hell break loose. But the riches that we have will deliver us. And guess what? This knowledge is uh, compared to riches. Let's get that real quick and we'll close. This is Romans, um, the 11th chapter. In the 33rd verse, it says, O oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of your Bashim and Shah. See how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. So on the one hand, you know, these carnal riches is not going to deliver you in the day of wrath, but the riches we possess is going to be the catalyst, if you will, for our deliverance. So yeah, I just want to touch on that, Lord willing, it was edifying. Till the next time I say, Shalom.